Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over const reference. And const reference is basically a form of const correctness. So this is a term used in C++. Basically, the idea here is whenever you can mark something as const, you should mark it as const. So you can avoid accidentally creating bugs in your code. In my previous videos, I talked about the differences between passing something by value, reference. So when you're passing by value, you're essentially making a copy of the value. And this is generally okay if you're working with primitive data types, such as int, double, float, bool, or character, because the way references works is basically it's implemented similar to a pointer. So it is actually more efficient to just copy this primitive data type than to use a reference. Now, if you're working with something larger, such as class types, for example, strings or vectors, then you would want to pass by reference instead of passing by value. And if we pass by reference, we might also mark it as const reference. Basically, if we are not going to change the values, we should mark it as const so that it is read only. And there are two main places where we would use const reference. And the first place is functions. So when we are passing in values, as parameters in our functions, we want to pass by const reference if we only want to read the parameter values. So for instance, let's say I have two vectors here and I want to print out each value in the vector. I would create a function that would print out the vector. So I will call it print vector. And I'm going to pass in a vector of string, but I'm going to pass in a reference. So to pass by reference, all I need to do is add an ampersand, and then I will call this vec. And if I didn't have this ampersand, then we would be passing by value. So over here, I'm going to write a for loop to iterate through the vector. So for size t, i is equal to zero, i is less than vec.size, i plus plus, c out vec at index i, white space, and end line here. And then over here, let's call the function. So I'm going to do print vector cities and print vector fruits. And notice in this function, because I am only reading this vector, I'm not making any changes to any of the values inside the vector. I will mark this as const. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get our two vectors printed out. So this is the first case where you would use pass by const reference. The second case would be using ranged base for loop, otherwise known as the for each loop. So this is a regular for loop. I can rewrite this logic by using a ranged base for loop. So I can do for string, and I'll just call this item colon vec. I would just see out item and then see our end line over here. And just like when we are passing in our vector in this function parameter, when we are using the range base for loop, we are essentially making a copy. So this is pretty much pass by value. There's no need to make a copy for each element if all I'm going to do is read this vector and print it out. So I would add an ampersand here so that now it is a reference. And here, I'm going to mark this as const because I do not want to change anything in this vector. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we get the two vectors printed out. So remember, we should pass by reference if we are working with class types such as string and vector. In this case, since it is a vector of strings, I have a const reference over here for the string. And in the parameter, I also have a const reference for the vector of strings. Now, if this were a vector of integers, then I would just do int item like so. So I do not need to make a const reference for an int because of how references are implemented. It is actually more efficient to just copy the primitive data types. All right, so hopefully that clears things up for you and you now know when to use const reference in your code. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.